it's starting. Oh, it is. I am just going to click that so I can hear things. Hello. Um, I am live. I am hoping it is working. It has been a little while since I have done any lives in the group. Um, so who knows? Let's hope it's working anyway. So if you're here, comment, comment something, anything. No, comment me uh, how old your whip is. Um, do they count to surf? Um, but, but, but I'm making, keeping an eye, making sure it's actually doing something. Um, fingers crossed it is. Um, there's not many of you here at the minute, so I will just keep chatting. Oh, there's someone. <laughs> Super, it is working then. That's always the best start. Um, so, oh yeah, there it goes. It's pinging through. I think I'm on a bit of a delay. Um, so if you're here, let me know how old your whip is. Um, hey Danny, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, uh, say, let me know how old your uh, whip is. Um, are they having any, uh, issues with counter surfing just while we wait for a few people to rock up and find the live? Um, counter surfing is definitely a whip it sort of problem, sight hound sort of problem, I think is probably fairer to say. Um, so feel free, tell me, does your, does your whip it counter surf? Do they do it? We've definitely had counter surfing whippets in my house. Um, Marley was in that photo, um, used to love counter surfing, good fun. Super, so this will be recorded, so even if you are not live and, yeah, even if you're not live, we have to pop off. It will be here later, nonetheless. So I will uh, get started with some tips and advice, what to do, what not to do. I've got Sasha, it's 18 months old and she constantly counter surfs, okay. How, oh, constantly sounds a lot. <laughs> um, I think the fun is, uh, you know, which I'll say, to, you know, as a general thing, the fun is that they only need one payoff for counter surfing and it becomes like a full-time job. Um, they whip it, sort of take it upon themselves to see it as, you know, their, their job in the house. They're going to make sure that your counters are clean and tidy. Um, because if they're not, they're going to come and take your stuff, <laughs> essentially. Um, whip it so the right kind of shape to get on counters. Uh, my Jack Russell, I obviously had no issues none, with counter surfing. Um, so, Counter surfing, if you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, is your whippets getting onto the counters and stealing things. Um, everything is usually the right kind of height for a whippet. Um, and if they get it once, they're going to keep doing it. So there was a, a lot of you in the group to, who said that your whippets counter surf and you've tried lots of different things and the different things weren't working or you know you weren't sure exactly what you should be doing to reduce that counter surfing and, and make your life a bit easier. So there are always two sort of main components that we're going to do when we're training anything um, and that is management and that is behaviour modification. Where is your jumper from? I don't know, I got it as a Christmas gift. I will try and find out. Um, that's probably something I should have paid attention to when I got it. Um, I think they're meant to be whippets. I'm not sure if they look whippety. Um, so, well, two main components, we've got management and training. And the, the the part where I see us often, and I, you know, I say us because I've done it myself in the past, the part where I see us often having the problems is that management part, because if we've got a whip it and they are enjoying counter surfing, it's a very self rewarding behavior. So if you've tried ignoring it, I can almost guarantee almost that they are just going to keep doing it because they're not doing it for your attention necessarily. They are doing it because at some point they think there's going to be something on that counter. So what I mean by management is we need to make sure they're not rehearsing it because every time they do it, they're gonna be more likely to do it. They're gonna want to get on that counter, check out what's going on, because there's always that small chance, small chance something could be there. Dogs are essentially gamblers. Um, if it paid off just once, they will keep doing it, and they will keep doing it. <laughs> like I say this as a voice of experience, they will keep doing it. Many, many, many years ago, Marley, one of my whippets, um, worked out how to get in the fridge. I can promise you it only took once for Marley to think the best game ever was to try and get in the fridge. Um, and it's something he would have happily continued to do day and day 
um, until we got tile blocks for the fridge because it worked once oh and it really worked he had a great time in that fridge so what we need to do is restrict our access in some way to the counters or anything on the counters uh, you know we're we're whippet trained household now there is nothing on the counters if there is it's really like pushed to the back uh things can go in uh you know cupboards mic off microwaves um anything and everything so one simple management solution is we, we put everything out of the way i i don't think that's going to stop every whippet because they're going to still jump up and um, for a lot of us we don't want them jumping up and looking either I might be wrong, but I know for, you know, my household, they don't, we don't like it when the, the whippets are jumping on the counters. Because they're coming in from the garden, they've got muddy feet, it's, it's not very pleasant. So we want to do management. And management could be that when we are not able to supervise them, then we are restricting their access to the kitchen or, or any counters that we feel they might be able to get hold of. Um, and that could be through gates. We've got gates like uh, kitty gates into the kitchen. We have the extra tall ones because, as I'm sure many of you know, whippets can, at least in my house, jump the normal sized gates. Maybe it's just my whippets are uh, really determined. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but we've got the extra tall safety gate going into the kitchen, which means if I am not able to supervise them, they're not in the kitchen because I don't want them to accidentally either hit the jackpot and find something I've unintentionally left there in, in a hurry, or I don't want them constantly jumping at those counters. So I'm either going to use gates, crates, doors, whatever I need to in the early parts of that training because I don't want them to keep doing it. I don't want them to learn to keep doing it. And, you know, this is sounds sometimes like it's, you know, not a lot of excitement. <laughs> training isn't always. Um, it doesn't sound like it's um, addressing it, but the behavior is very self-reinforcing. If they keep doing it, they're going to keep doing it. Um, what I'm not going to do, uh, you know, is I'm not going to shout at them. Uh, I'm not going to bring in any sort of uh, aversives when they are counter surfing because there is a lot of uh, fallback to that. You know, whippets are very sensitive. I don't want to be shouting at them. I don't want to be spraying them with water or rattling a noise because that's going to affect other aspects of their life later. And it's going to affect their relationship with me. And I don't want that to happen. So if they are jumping up, what I possibly would do is teach them an off cue, which um, is is really quite easy to teach. You know, I could do it with. I'll, I'll pop a I'll pop a link in the group later. Actually, um, I teach that, and then if they're on the counters, I say off. They get off. They get rewarded, and they're probably going to get taken out of the kitchen if you know I've spotted them doing it and I'm not supervising them. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get mad at them. Internally, I might be. <laughs> Internally, I might be very unhappy. But there's no use in showing it because they don't understand and it's a self-reinforcing behaviour. So, we've got the management aspect of it. What we want to do and what we don't always do is that training aspect, which is, I want to teach my dogs that we don't go on the counters. I want to teach them it so they don't go on the counters. And that means I'm not going to wait for them to go on the counters. So very often what we do as owners is we do very, what we call like uh, reactive training. We go, oh no, you're on the counters, get off. Oh no, you're, uh, you know, doing, pulling something out of a cupboard, stop it. Um, what we want to be doing is training so they don't do that, ideally, in some cases, uh, in, so they don't do it. In the first place, lost my train of thought, I talk too fast, uh, my brain can't keep up sometimes. Um, so... We want to train them that we don't go on the counters. And the easiest, easiest way to train this is to do some mat training with them. Bed training, you might have seen it called boundary training, whatever it is. Uh, we are teaching our dogs to lay on a bed uh, or a blanket, a, a mat, whatever it might be. And we want to build lots of value in this mat training. You know, it's it's not it's not overly complicated to teach in my experience. Um, you want to teach it away from the kitchen. You're going to get a mat. You're going to reward them for sitting on it, rewarding them for being on it. It's a really basic run through of it. Um, you're going to get them used to the idea that this mat is really amazing. And then you're going to have a mat in your kitchen or a bed or whatever you fancy. And uh, then you're going to train them in the kitchen to be on that. You're going to reward them for choosing to go on that mat staying on that mat while you walk away, then introducing the layers of 
I'm dealing with food. There's food on the side. Oh, God, anything. You know, if it's, <laughs> if it's like anything. Maybe um, Arkle would love a pen. Why is my dog obsessed with pens? Is anyone else's? Um, I could put a pen on the side. Um, I could put something on the side. And I'm then going to maybe reward him for not just getting up and launching across the room at it. I might then add some distance and reward him for staying on that mat. Because if he knows that he just has to stay on a mat to get paid, he's going to stay on that mat to get paid. <laughs> he is going to learn that that pays off more than free roaming everywhere else. And what we're doing is sort of uh, building that up. So we're building the layers up so they understand that I'm going to see your comment, but I'll lose my train of thought. I'll come back to it. Um, we want them to understand that they don't need to, um, you know, be on the counters. They get paid for being on that mat. And uh, it's a really good skill. It's going to really help. Um, and it's going to help in lots of ways. Um, I'm just going to read this comment. I do this all on my phone and it's not always very friendly with me. It's not just counters. I took my boy to a new friend's house on Christmas day and she had nibbles on the coffee table, which were promptly moved to a higher level. He managed to jump up and almost stole a grape. I just couldn't stop him. So mat training is going to be really helpful then because you can take uh, a bed to your friend's house. You can take, that's why I love mat training. You can take your bed to your friend's house, to cafe, to vet, to wherever you need to. And they're going to learn that they are going to stay. <laughs> Someone else's dog is obsessed with pens, hair clips and TV remotes. Of course, all those except TV remotes. Um, <laughs> um, but the mat is great because it's going to be portable. They're not just going to learn it in the kitchen. Um, they can learn it anywhere and everywhere. Um, I, I take mats with me with all my dogs to all sorts of places. We use it for training around distractions. They're learning that just staying on that mat is going to pay off more than their desire to do something else. So we could do that mat work, you know, just in the kitchen, but we could do it in the living room. We could start to pair it with leaving some food, some natural self-control. Um, there's loads of ways we can progress that because it's definitely not, definitely not always just our houses. <laughs> with whippets, taking them places is full of distractions. Distinctly remember going somewhere with family uh, for a meal with one of my dogs who never, ever countersurfed. And they thought it would be really funny to encourage my whippet to jump on the table. Not four feet on, but two feet on. And that was, you know, while I wasn't looking. I was, I was not impressed. Um, so from there on, we took a mat because my dogs don't stray off their mat, even when other people try and tease them off mats. Um, so the mat training is gonna be really helpful. But even if you didn't want to use a mat, you could still have your distractions on the counter. You want to reward good choices. And in that situation, it might just be you're keeping four feet on the floor, you're not being impulsive, you're not doing the thing you want to do, I am going to pay you. Um, it could be that when we can't train, because I know that that's a big problem, people tell me that like, Zara, I don't have time to train my dog constantly, which I totally understand. <laughs> um, management is, is more than acceptable, it doesn't have to be that crate and that gate. Um, you know, if I'm busy in the kitchen and I can't, for whatever reason, separate my dog out, or I'm at someone else's house and I can't separate them out and the, the mat training isn't there yet, I might take a chew, I might take a really long-lasting chew, calm, slicky mats, the things that my dogs enjoy, just to keep them busy and not rehearsing that less than favourable behaviour. But honestly, the, the training on a mat is, is one of my favourite things to teach. Um, I think it's really helpful, it's really beneficial, not just with counter surfing, but I could probably solve many problems by teaching dogs to settle on a mat. Because you've got the portability, they know it's a portable boundary so they don't step off until you say otherwise, um, they uh, know that it's a safe space so if I've got a nervous dog they know no one is going to invade their space on it, and it keeps them physically almost grounded because they can't be jumping up on a crazy usually when they're on it so you know the I, I think mat training would be why because a, a few of you had that concern that it's not just at your house it's when you're going other places um so i think that the mat training is a really good way to move forward with that um it's going to ensure that they understand that feet on the floor really gets them loads more um it's a case of if you are um consistent enough with it they absolutely will get it 
Um, one of my whippets, Arthur, I was really, really determined. He was never, ever going to jump on anything. And do you know what? He never did. <laughs> um, he never jumped on anything. Um, certainly not in my house, certainly not when we were out, you know, having meals or anything. You could leave anything on the side and he would just be like, oh, that's, that's nice. It's not for me. <laughs> because I didn't allow him to rehearse it. I was really on it and um, for lack of a better word like strict in that I was on it I was making sure I was training him or managing him and he just never learned to jump all over my counters unlike Marley um, who has taken a lot of training um, so it's definitely possible um, and it's definitely something they, they can get the hang of I think um, <coughs> what I would do is teach a really good off cue which I will uh, post in the group um, at some point this evening um, because that's going to be just a really quick way to get them off the surfaces great if your whippets jump up people too I know quite a few of you have kangaroo whippets who like to jump up people um, so that's definitely going to help in quite a few respects um, then you're going to manage a situation not allowing them to you know have the access have the opportunity whether you're managing them with gates, crates, pens, whatever you need to do, or licky mats, chews, whatever it might be. But then you're going to do that training of rewarding for not jumping up on the counters, for not doing less than good things, um, and keeping either their feet on the floor or on the mat. It's a really quick overview, but I would say it's got everything you need. Don't ask me any questions because that didn't take me long. Um, ask any questions on counter surfing. Do you have any questions? What does your, hello, um, oh, things are popping up. Um, uh, my boy's almost eight months, am I too late? No, definitely not, definitely not. There's there's gonna be a little, a bit of a um, reinforcement history. So it's always gonna be you know, a tiny bit trickier, but eight months old is quite young um, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, one of my dogs was a rescue that I got at um, eight, one of my Jack Russells. Um, and you'd learn tons of stuff um, as an eight, eight, from eight to 14. <laughs> so it's definitely never too late, um, as long as you're nice and consistent and you, you put the time in with that training and they will quite enjoy that training, to be fair. Um, I, think, I, I think my whippets quite enjoy getting paid for sitting on a mat um, and not doing anything. <laughs> I think they think it's some easy, easy pay. So I definitely wouldn't worry that um, they, they are eight months and they've had some reinforcement history because as long as we're nice and consistent from here on in, we're definitely going to get some good results. Um, I hope that's helped any more. Oh gosh, I'm always clicking the wrong thing. Um, I'm not good at this sometimes. I'm going to blame my phone. I'm going to blame my phone. So does anyone have any more questions on counter surfing? Because I do think, you know, especially this time of year, we're all going out, um, seeing, seeing family, friends, and there's extra tasty things on the counters. Um, it's definitely something that's always relevant at this time of year. So it's it's pretty, you know, tricky to manage it now, but maybe sort of get your Christmases done. Christmases done, Zara. Get your New Year's done, um, get your holidays finished, and then get a good start on that training in the new year. Um, because that's going to be a good time to get started, get things in action, get into new habits. Um, let's see, any more questions? No. Oh, okay, super. Oh, that didn't take me very long at all. Um, that's why I like doing these. It's so easy. This would have taken me ages of typing. Maybe I'm just a really slow typer. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I must have been doing some mat training and he runs and sits on it and is enthusiastic. So I'll carry on. Brilliant. That's really good. That's what you really want. And then you want to layer in little bits of distractions, just little distractions here and there. Um, super. Right. In which case, I think that's, that's, that's uh, counter surfing done um so i will this will be recorded um so if you missed any of it you know if you've joined halfway through you should be able to come back and watch it um i think that should go through straight away um i will pop the little link on teaching the uh off cue in the group and um you'll let me know how you get on with that and if you're watching this in the future as it were um you can ask questions still and i'll try and uh, zip back to them later. Uh, you might be best off tagging me because sometimes when it's on the lives, it just disappears. So, I 
hope that was helpful. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I will find out where this came from. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I will find out for you. Um, you'll have a lovely evening and um, yeah, see you again soon, I hope. Bye, everyone.